I went down to the cafeteria to see if everyone had gone to lunch. But I got lost. Suddenly I knew I had to hide because I couldn't be there either. That's when I ran into the auditorium. All the lights were out. I crouched down in between two rows. I heard Chief yelling. He said to go check under the seat, 5F. So I did. I could never tell you what I saw there. So we know to be on the lookout for our enemies, but what about keeping an eye on ourselves? As I'm sure most of you are aware, we recently had to let go of one of our executive vice presidents, Milo Franks, a good friend of mine who allegedly harassed many of you in the audience today. Now, we have voluntarily taken a really tough, proactive look at our internal policies, and you are going to see some big changes at next quarter's orgy. Additionally, as part of the class action settlement, we are legally delighted to show you the following video in its entirety. Another week, another class action settlement. Oh, you know this isn't the first time they've fired Milo Franks, right? You must be new here. You remember Belgium? Jackie convinced the king to let us privatize the country's finances. Of course, Jackie typed in their own country code one day and wound up transferring all of Belgium's money to Belarus. Oh, we tried to get it back, but the Belarusians had already spent it on knockoff handbags and CD burners. So who took the fall for that one? Executive Vice President? Milo Franks. He's the perfect scapegoat. He's high enough up to satisfy the board of directors and the Senate, but he's low enough that he's forgotten a week later. Now they fired Milo for the dam collapse, they fired him for the poison dog food, and he just keeps coming back to bear just to get blamed again for the scandal of the month. The guy must be a real masochist. I wouldn't know. I've never met him. And neither has anyone else. Actually, I did meet a Milo recently, but I don't think it was him. Oh, that video never gets old. The 4th of July is a special day for our country. But it's also special for me personally. 60 years ago today was the first flight of the Empire Sunrise. It was a radical prototype jet plane designed to break the speed of sound. Who was the pilot? Well, it was supposed to be Captain Bonus Washington, but his gout was flaring up. His stand-in was First Lieutenant Bonus Waverly. Uh, but he'd just been arrested that morning for winking at a lady. Everyone thought the flight would be canceled, so we all headed to the mess hall for some peanut. Ten minutes later, the major storms in, hollering that we had an unexpected guest. We ran to the window, and who was standing on the runway but General Eisenhower himself? I was so surprised I spit out my peanut. We all knew the stakes. Either the Empire Sunrise would break the sound barrier that afternoon or Ike would march straight to President City and kill the whole program. Problem was, no man had the stomach to jump in the cockpit and deflower that supersonic maiden! No man but Junior Airman Jackie Dalton. When I sprung to my feet to volunteer, everyone was speechless! Hell, I was only 15! But nobody else was volunteering, so Major tossed me a flight helmet, and Bonus Washington limped over and gave me a manly kiss on the lips. I jumped into the cockpit, and it wasn't long until I had the sunrise at cruising altitude. Major came on the horn with the flight plan. He said east, 
but I heard. I slapped the switches for all four sonic thrusters and angled the sunrise till she pointed due up. The altimeter started spinning like a propeller as my lips curled back from the acceleration. My last memory of the climb is the man-made thunderclap that meant our mission had been a success. When I came to, it was three hours later, according to the electric clock on the dash. And above me was the majesty of outer space. Below me was also the majesty of space. I was in actual space. Thinking quickly, I rolled up the windows! Some calculations on the back of an envelope told me I'd spiral back to Earth in eight days and run out of oxygen in three. So I disrobed and tore my burlap flight suit into long strips, which I wove into a crude net. Whenever the oxygen got low, I'd cast out the net and snare a few stray air particles to tide me over. Well, the week just flew by. The engine kicked in just as I re-entered Earth's atmosphere. I landed back at base, expecting to be welcomed as a hero. Instead, I was dishonorably discharged on the spot! My only crime? Survival! And the misuse of government burlap. That's when I realized that the only thing regulation does is stop risk takers in their tracks. At Bear, I reward risk takers. And this year, you all took a lot of risks. Here come the rewards. I've always believed in giving you the best. But with the glut of profits we've won in the mortgage game, we finally have a little extra spending money for the premises! You said you wanted fancy trash cans! You're getting it. You said you wanted to throw out the old trash cans and larger, even nicer trash cans! You're getting them! You said your chairs were uncomfortable. Better chairs everyone gets, too! People who worked in cubicles before now have offices. People who worked in offices before now have quarter offices. We built more quarters. We also renovated the solarium club, classed it up a little bit, removed the mechanical bull. I know, I know. But most importantly, performance-based bonuses. Three employees competing for one big pile of cash. Cecilia's presenting this year. We're gonna take a short break while the boys in the judges booth count up the bonus money. I'm gonna go grub some interns. I'm just kidding. Am I? See you in a bit. Breaking news, regulators. We just heard from the informant. Turns out, he or she is up for the big bonus. If we can get the informant that pile of money, they'll be certain to testify tonight. How are we supposed to do that? Any way you can! I'm sure the judges can be persuaded! Chief, we don't even know what this informant looks like. How are we supposed to pick him out of a bonus lineup? We're already on it. Every available regulator is hitting the streets and doing background. Expect some updates in the next few minutes! Bullocks! Jackie just walked backstage. Who needs railroads and utilities when you can just take a shot of boardwalk? It's like right there. Sounds like a plan, Franco. A word to the wise. Some people are so powerful, it's best not to get involved with him at all. And I'm not talking about Jackie. Is it time for 